Uh, so today let us see another topic of uh, knee pain uh, known as chondromalacia patella we have seen a couple of few more conditions in the last classes uh, about around the knee joint and the knee pain from uh, different different uh, causes and conditions so this is also one of the condition because of which uh, knee pain is uh, generated and it is often common so let us see in details what is chondromalacia patella cmp is referred to as uh, anterior knee pain due to physical and biomechanical changes the articular cartilage of the posterior surface of the patella is going goes through degenerative changes and which manifests as softening swelling fraying and erosion of the hyaline cartilage underlying the patella and sclerosis of the underlying bone so cmp is one of the most frequently encountered causes of anterior knee pain among young people and the word is derived from greek words chondros meaning cartilage and malacia means softening hence chondromalacia patella is a softening of the articular cartilage on the posterior surface of the patella which may eventually lead to fibrillation fissuring and erosions let us uh, see the clinically relevant anatomy the knee we know it comprises of four major bones the femur tibia fibula and the patella patella articulates with the femur at the trochlear groove there is a groove at the femur which the patella sits over it so the articular cartilage on the underside of the patella allows the patella to glide over the femoral groove which is necessary for efficient motion at the knee joint so when there is excess and persistent turning forces on the lateral side of the knee that can have a negative effect on the nutrition of the articular cartilage and more specifically in the medial and central area of the patella where degenerative changes will occur more readily the quadriceps insert into the patella via the quadriceps tendon and are divided into four separate muscles we know rectus femoris vastus lateralis vastus intermedius and vastus medialis the vastus medialis has a oblique fibers which are referred to as the vastus media medialis obliquus vmo now here in this condition vmo is a bit more important and vital how i will see in details so these muscles are active stabilizers during the knee extension especially the vastus lateralis on the lateral side and the vmo on the medial side now this vmo is active during the knee extension but it does not extend the knee its function is to keep the patella centered in the trochlea so see here the vmo plays a very important role its function is to keep the patella centered in the trochlea this muscle is the only active stabilizer on the medial aspect so its functional timing and the amount of activity is very much critical to the patellar femoral movement a smaller change having significant effects on the position of the patella now not only the quadriceps influence the patella position but also the passive structures of the knee these are more extensive and stronger on the lateral side and they on the then on the medial side with most of the lateral retinaculum arising from the iliotibial band if the iliotibial band is under excessive tension excessive lateral trank tracking or lateral patellar tilt can occur so this can be a result of the tensor fasciae later being tight as the itb itself is a non contractile structure the femoral antiversion or the medial torsion of femur is a condition which changes the alignment of the bones at the knee so this may lead to over injuries of the knee due to the mal alignment of the femur in relation to the patella and tibia this is very important biomechanical factor now another important factor is the q angle we have already discussed this q angle and its importance in the last topics of the knee joint so the quadriceps angle is the geometric relationship between the pelvis the tibia and the patella and the femur it is defined as the angle between the first line from the asis to the central patella and the second line from the central patella to the tibial 
tuberosity. So if there is an increased adduction or an internal rotation of the hip, the Q angle will increase, which increases the relative valgus of the lower extremity as well. The higher the Q angle and the valgus will increase the contact pressure on the lateral side of the patellofemoral joint is also increased by external rotation of the tibia. So here this is a picture where uh, one side it is the normal knee joint, the patella, the cartilage, here is the blue portion and the cartilage and the femur and the tibia but here you can see the patella, the cartilage present in the side of the patella is going for degenerative changes, the cartilage worn down and also the cartilage on the femur. The etiology of CMP is actually a little bit of poorly uh, it's understood although it is believed that the cause is uh, are of because of injury generalized constitutional disturbance and the patellofemoral contact or as a result of trauma to the chondrocytes in the articular cartilage leading to proteolytic enzymatic digestion of the superficial matrix. So it may also be caused by instability or mild tracking of the patella which softens the articular cartilage. So the CMP is usually described as an overload injury caused by malalignment of the femur to the patella and the tibia. The main reasons are there is a Q angle I told you already an abnormality of the Q angle is one of the most significant factors of patellar malalignment. A normal Q angle is 14 degree for men and 17 for women. An increase can result in the increased lateral pull on the patella. Then there may be muscular tightness of rectus femoris, the TFL. The rectus femoris tightness will affect the patella movement during the flexion of the knee. TFL will affect the influence on the ITB. The hamstrings, if they are tight during the running, the tight hamstrings increase the knee flexion, which results in increased ankle dorsiflexion. So these are compensatory pronation resulting in the tallow-cruel joints. So, the gastrocnemius tightness will result in compensatory pronation in the subtalar joint. So, you can see the whole lower extremity, the components are connected to each other. The one component movement, if it is not proper or not in the proper alignment, the other component is automatically hampered or biomechanical alteration takes place. So, that is why we uh, often uh, say that we are binded by this kinetic chain or the movement the components are linked to one another. Excessive pronation, prolonged pronation of the subtalar joint is caused by internal rotation of the leg. This internal rotation will result in malalignment of the patella sometimes. So also there is a condition called patella alta which we have already finished in a previous class where the patella is positioned in an abnormally superior position it is present when the length of the patella tendon is 20 percent greater than the height of the patella then the vestus medialis insufficiency the function of the vestus medialis is to realign the patella during the extension and if the strength of vm is insufficient it will cause a lateral drift of the patella so the muscular balance between the vl and the vm is very important where the vm is weak patella is pulled too far laterally which can cause increased contact with the con uh, condyles laterally leading to generative degenerative diseases so the degenerative changes of the articular cartilage can be caused by trauma repetitive micro trauma and inflammatory conditions then postural distortion hip positioning and strength are linked to the prevalence of the patellar femoral pain syndrome therefore hip strengthening and stability exercise may be useful in the treatment program of patellar femoral pain syndrome then Coming to the pathology, the stages of the disease, the CMP shows areas of high sensitivity of on fluid sequences. That is, it can be associated with the increased thickness of the cartilage and also may cause edema. In the later stages, it will be more irregular surface of focal thinning that can expand to expose the subchondral bone. Now, the chondromalacia patella is graded because it is based on the basics of arthroscopic findings the depth of cartilage thinning and associated subchondral bone changes. So moderate to severe changes can be seen on MRI. Stage 1, it uh, softening and swelling of the 
Articular cartilage takes place due to broken vertical collagenous fibers. This cartilage is spongy on arthroscopy. Stage 2, there is blister formation in the articular cartilage due to separation of the superficial from the deep cartilaginous layers. These cartilaginous features affecting less than 1.3 cm square in area with no extension to the subchondral bone. In stage 3, fissures, ulcerations, fragmentation and fibrillation of cartilage takes place extending to the subchondral bone but affecting less than 50% of the patellar articular surface. In stage 4, greater formation and abnormation of the exposed subchondral bone takes place and more than 50% of the patella uh, articular surface is exposed with sclerosis, erosions of the subchondral bone and ultimately osteophytes formation. So the articular cartilage does not have any nerve endings. So the CMP should not be considered as a true source of anterior knee pain. Rather is a pathological or surgical finding that represents areas of articular cartilage trauma or divergent loading. Koch et al. showed that there is a significant association between subcutaneous knee fat thickness with the presence and severity of CMP. This could explain why women suffer more than the condition of a CMP than men. Now the clinical presentation main symptom is anterior knee pain which is exacerbated by exacerbated by common daily activities that load the patellofemoral joint such as running, strike climbing, squatting, kneeling, changing from a sitting to standing. The pain often causes disability affecting the short term participation of daily and physical activities. Other symptoms are tenderness on palpation under the medial and lateral border of the patella, crepitation felt with the motion, minor swelling may be there or a weak vastus medialis muscles and a high Q angle. Now this vastus medialis is functionally divided into two components, the vastus medialis longus and the vastus medialis obliquus. The longus extends the knee with the rest of the quadricep muscle but the VMO obliquus do not extend the knee as I said earlier, it is an active Throughout knee extension, but it keeps the patella centered in the femoral trochlea. So, this condition can cause deficit in the quadriceps strength. Therefore, uh, building or maintaining quadriceps strength is very much essential. A significant number of individuals are asymptomatic, but crepitation, inflection, or extension is often present. So, CMP is common in adolescents and females with uh, idiopathic CMP usually seen in young children and adolescents and this is degenerative condition is most common in the middle-aged and older population. Other conditions may uh, be seen as differential diagnosis like patellar subluxation, osteoarthritis, hematoid arthritis, anterior knee pain, patellar femoral pain syndrome and uh, so on. The diagnostic procedures uh, as it was described first by Budinger in 1906, CMP has been of the clinical interest because its diagnosis is often difficult. The chief reason for this is the etiology is often unknown and the correlation between the articular cartilage changes and the clinical system is poor. Patients affected by CMP are young between 15 and 35 and may, many are highly active and are often considerably disabled by the symptoms of the aching behind the patella, recursion, recurrent effusion of the knee, knee instability and crepitus. So the primary diagnostic approach for CMP is uh, radiography with added arthrography, pinhole scintigraphy, part of arthrography is also used to diagnose the condition. MRI is an effective non-invasive method with the ability to increase the sensitivity and specificity of the diagnosis. The outcome measures we can see the anterior knee pain scale 13 item questionnaire and the 5 KOS subscale that is uh, pain and other symptoms function in daily living function in sport recreation and the knee related quality of life. Examination of the knee is fourfold observation mobility feel then x-ray. So it is done in fourfold. Observation, mobility, feel and x-ray. On observation, joint appearance is usually normal but there may be a slight effusion. On mobility, passive movements are usually full and painless but repeated extension of the knee 
from flexion will produce pain and a grating feeling underneath the patella especially if the articular cartilage surfaces are compressed together the feel the pain and crepitus will be felt if the patella is compressed against the femur with vertically or horizontally with the knee in full extension by displacing the patella medially and laterally patella margins and the articular surfaces may be felt tenderness of one of the other margin may be elicited and more frequently felt medially Resisting a static quadriceps contraction will generally produce a sharp pain under the patella and this may be apparent in both the knees but more severe on the affected side. Now an x-ray uh, AP view of the patellar femoral joint is needed to detect any radiological change but the most advanced cases there is no convincing radiological change. Later, later stages uh, the Patellar femoral joint space narrows down and the osteoarthritic changes begin to appear. Now the tests, the patient's posture can be initially clue as well as observe the symmetry such as limping or the alignment in standing, internal femoral rotation, anterior posterior pelvic tilt, hyperextended or uh, locked back, knees, genuverum, velgum, abnormal position of the foot, gait pattern <coughs> may also be affected. The mobility and range of motion of the joint are tested which can be limited. So if bursitis is present, passive flexion or active extension will be painful. And the loss of power in the affected leg may be also present on isometric testing. So there are specific tests for anterior pain, uh, knee pain syndrome. Patellar grind test or Clark sign here the, in this patellar grind test it detects the presence of patellar femoral joint disorder. Positive sign on this test is the pain in the patellar femoral joint. Then you have the compression test, extension uh, resistance test. This test is used to perform a maximal provocation on the muscle tendon mechanism of the extensor muscles and it is positive and the affected knee demonstrates less power to when trying to maintain the pressure. The critical test, this is done with the patient in uh, high sitting and performing isometric quadriceps contractions at five different angles 0, 30, 60, 90 and 120 while the femur is externally rotated sustaining the contractions for 10 seconds. If pain is produced then the leg is positioned in full extension. And the, in this position, the patella and the femur have no more contact. The lower leg of the patient is supported by the therapist so the quadriceps can be fully relaxed. When the quadriceps is relaxed, the therapist is able to glide the patella medially. This glide is maintained while the isometric contractions are again performed. If this reduces the pain and the pain is patella femoral in origin, there is a high chance of favorable outcome. So it is possible to diagnose incorrectly and this test may aid in determining chondromalacia but other possible conditions also be needed to be ruled out. Now in medical management, exercise and education are two important aspects of this uh, treatment of this condition. Education helps the patient to understand the condition and how they should deal for the recovery and exercise focuses on strength, stretching and strengthening of the appropriate structures such as hamstrings, quadriceps, gastrocnemius length and strength of the gluteus muscles. If conservative measure fails then there are a number of possible surgical procedures like contractomy, full patellectomy. Contractomy is known as shaving. This treatment includes shaving down the damaged cartilage to the non-damaged cartilage underneath. The success of this treatment depends on the severity of the cartilage damage. Now another is the drilling. It is a method that is frequently used to heal the damaged cartilage. However, this procedure has not been so far proven to be effective. More localized degeneration might respond better to drilling small holes through the damaged cartilage. This facilitates the growth of the healthy tissue through the holes from the layers underneath. Now the other is the full patellectomy. This is the most severe surgical treatment. It is only used when no other procedures are helpful. But a significant consequences is that the quadriceps will become weak. 
then there is the replacement of the damaged cartilage the damaged cartilage is replaced by polythene cap prosthesis that is this is replaced and then other type is autologous chondrocyte transplantation transplantation simply removing the cartilage is not a cure the biomechanical deficits need to be addressed and there are various procedures to aid in managing this next is tightening of the middle capsule if the middle capsule is middle capsule is lax it can be tightened by pulling the patella back into its correct alignment lateral release a very tight lateral capsule will pull the later, uh, patella laterally <clears throat> so release of the lateral patella retinaculum allows the patella to track correctly into the femoral groove medial shift of the tibial tubercle sometimes the insertion of the quadriceps tendon at the tibial tubercle is shifted uh, to decrease the amount of wear on the underside of the patella partial removal of the patella although there is no overall agreement of the treatment of CMP the general consensus is that the best treatment is the if possible non-surgical one so non-surgical mainly the physiotherapy plays an important role the exercise program uh, conservative treatment is both physical and highly advised to sort of diatomy can help relieve pain and increase the blood supply to the area improving nutrition supply to the articular cartilage then the isometric quadriceps strengthening and stretching restoration of the adequate quadriceps strength and function is very much essential factor in achieving good recovery the most effective exercises are isometric and isotonic in the inner range Stretching of the vestus lateralis and strengthening of the vestus medialis is often recommended, but they are difficult to isolate due to shared innervation and insertion. Also, it has shown that closed kinematic chain exercises can improve patellofemoral joint performance by increasing quadriceps muscle strength and patella alignment correction. <coughs> then, hamstring stretching, temporary modification of activity, patellar taping foot orthosis for pain if it is more then we can go for the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs along with hip abductor strengthening then the patellar realignment brace then sometimes ice is very useful that is called the cryotherapy the ice medication for reducing pain in an acute flare-up condition but uh, also you have to see the other factors now taping and braces very important uh, and uh, very helpful beneficial technique is the bracing as uh, is prescribed by McConnell or the McConnell taping or the kinesio taping supporting the patella and the knee joint by bracing is a further way to reduce the pain and symptoms it will also alter patellar tracking and reduce active function of the quadriceps so the bracing may be useful in short term not for long term uh, to avoid antalgic movements and normalize gait as much as possible foot orthosis is another option for pain relief but in cases where lower limb mechanics is deemed to be contributing to the knee pain that has to be analyzed which may be due to poor pronation control, excessive lower limb internal rotation during the weight bearing and increased Q angle. Also, a foam roller is can be used for relieving tight musculature and reducing pressure over the patella. So, these are the few references you can go through. So, ultimately, students, we have seen that the knee is a very much uh, is a knee is a complex where many structures are actually present with ligaments and the tendons and the muscles insertions the patella the patella femoral joints the uh, so the uh, the biomechanical and the anatomical alignment is very much uh, necessary for us as a physios to analyze and um, come for a uh, proper treatment plan because if we are only focusing the knee joint it will be wrong we have to see the hip the pelvic tilt the lumbar lordosis from there it may affect the 
tight muscles of the hip, the lateral muscles of the uh, thigh may be tight, uh, pulling the patella away towards the lateral side or the medial side, the structures may go weak from which the patella is going easily to the lateral side or maybe there is excessive internal rotation of the leg or maybe the subterrace when pronation is there, the foot arches are not proper. So we have to look it as a, a single unit and we have to analyze the biomechanics of the whole lower extremity in order to give good uh, benefit and to cure the uh, condition uh, without going for uh, surgery and if at all the things are not improving or it is diagnosed very lately already the condition is very severe then we have to go for the surgical uh, interventions so i hope this lecture will uh, be helping you guys to know this uh, control malaysia patella a bit more details in a better way and any doubts we can discuss uh, in our uh, forum uh, so okay thank you for watching this video